Hey guys, Merry Christmas and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I made this Christmas tree box and I'll take you through all the steps that I did so you can make this box for yourself. If you want the dimensions for this box, you can check out the description where I've included them. And this box is made from only one sheet of scrap plywood and a two by six, so not a lot of materials involved. All right, I can tell you can't wait to see the video, so let's get into it. So the panel portion of this box is made from plywood, so this is a scrap piece of plywood that I had. I believe this is 5 8 inch plywood and I broke this down on my table so so I first set the fence to 24 inches and then I ripped the plywood sheet the full length so each panel that I used ended up being two feet by one foot so since I ripped the panels to two feet wide I wanted to cross cut them at one foot now because an eight foot section of plywood is difficult to work with I first just cross cut it right down the middle then I brought the fence back, set that to 12 inches, and then I could cross cut these sliding it across the table saw. Now you could definitely make these to any size that you want, so it doesn't necessarily have to be two feet by one foot. Those are just the dimensions I found that would fit around my Christmas tree. So if the stand on your tree is larger or smaller, you can obviously switch out the dimensions that will fit for you. And these boxes can be made to about any size. So I cross cut four sections off to give me equal paneling. I did use the other piece of the plywood because the end on the first piece was split. I didn't want that. So when I had all of my four panels laid out, I put the saw blade down to where just a little bit would be cut out. And then I slid the board across the saw blade to cut grooves in each of the panels. So I'll put all of these grooves in all four panels. The first groove is right down the middle at approximately 12 inches. And then I'll move the fence in to adjust where the other grooves will go. So the grooves I cut on these panels were at 12 inches, eight inches, and four inches. And you can see here that I'll cut the groove on one side, flip the board around, and cut it on the other side. That way you can get two grooves on one. So I did this on all the panels as I mentioned. And these grooves will help the paneling be a little more detailed and sort of look like shiplap or tongue and groove boards, which looks great when it's finished overall. Whenever you do this, especially since you're repeating cuts, just make sure that your fingers are away from the blade. Sometimes it's easy to get relaxed when you're making several repetitive cuts on one thing. So just always be safe. Keep an eye on where the blade is and where your thumbs are sliding these boards across the blade. Here's what the grooves look like up close so you can see nice and parallel as well as equal spacing since we used the pattern that we did. To make the trim pieces along the edge I used a 2x6. You could also use a 2x4 or a 2x8 or really anything that you have here. So all that I did was rip half inch sections off of this. You really don't need anything thicker than a half an inch section but you will want to rip several of these. So I cross cut this piece at four feet before because it would be easier to handle. And then I just ripped several sections off of this. I ended up with 10 altogether. One thing that I really like to use here is the gripper push block, which is fully adjustable and will keep your fingers and hands away from the blade. This is an awesome product. If you want to check this out, I'll leave a link to this product and all of the others in the description below, as well as the dimensions of everything that I used in case you would like to make this Christmas tree box for yourself. So I double checked that the fence was still in the same spot when I cross cut the panels and then I cut four sections from these trim pieces that I had just ripped. These will make up the top and the bottom on two pieces of the frame and you'll see why shortly that we only cut four of these instead of eight. So I put a little bit of glue down and then these will be attached with one inch brad nails which should hold everything together securely. Whenever you do this try to line up the outside of these strips exactly with the panel because any inconsistency that you have will throw off this next measurement if they're not all equal. So I overlapped another trim piece and then I traced the difference to where this board would need to be cut, set the fence to that length and then I cut eight pieces of this all together. Now you definitely don't have to do this the way that I'm doing on the table saw. I'm trying to use my table saw more than my miter saw just to switch it up a little bit. But however you want to cut these, you want them all cross cut to the same length. After you have the side frame pieces cut out, you can put glue down, put them into place, and then again they'll be attached using brad nails. One trick that's useful here is to angle the brad nailer inward a little bit. That way, if the brad nail has a tendency to spring out, it'll come in to the panel rather than out the side. You don't want it to come out the side, especially if your fingers are near there. So on two of these panels, I wanted to add the X in the middle. So using an additional strip that I had cut earlier, I overlapped it and then traced the line of the underlying trim piece giving me the angles that I needed to cut out. So I try not to actually measure the angles, but just mark them on the overlap, which is easier. 
cut these pieces out, I just freehanded the angles on the table saw. Usually I'll use my miter saw, but the steep angle on these were very steep and I didn't feel comfortable cutting that on the miter saw. This actually turned out to be a lot faster and more efficient on the table saw anyway. Similarly to how the outside trim pieces were glued on the panel, this center piece will be glued the same way. And then again, I use brad nails to attach it to the panel. Since we want to make an X, I overlapped the other piece just like I did earlier. Trace the overlap lines, and then again, these lines can be cut out using the table saw. So I used the miter gauge to help me out a little bit here. I got some really straight lines, and then these could be put into place just like the other ones were. Here's a closer look after everything is together on this frame. You can see the lines that were cut out earlier kind of give it some detail, make it look like an actual panel. So when I had one of these completed, I went ahead and made another, which would allow me to move on to the other two side pieces. So you can see here that I put them together and then the other plywood panel will fit on the inside of each of these. This is important for when we're gonna measure the upper and lower trim pieces, which you're seeing me do here. So you want this trim piece to extend all the way from the outside of the other trim pieces, and you'll need four of these. So I made that mark, and then I cut four pieces the same length, which will be used for the trim on the top and the bottom of the other panels. One thing that you wanna do here is to make sure the box is square before you put these on. Since everything was cut to the exact same length, keeping them square is important. So I glued this piece into place and then once again I attached it with brad nails. I put a couple clamps on to help me. Now you'll notice here zooming in that I put brad nails on one piece of the panel but not on this outside. The reason for that being is that I want all of these panels to be able to come apart. That way when Christmas is over you can take this box, fold it up, and it'll store nicely. So we want to keep this trim piece only attached to this center panel. And the corners of these pieces will interlock to hold each other together and keep the box together, which we'll take a look at here in a couple minutes. So the top and the bottom pieces are put on the same way on both sides, on both pieces of the panel. Then when they were secured, I moved the clamps to the other side to hold pressure along while I put the other piece on here. So since we didn't attach the other piece to the outside of the panel, we're going to do the same but the opposite thing here. So this piece wants to be attached only to this side. You don't want to tack it into the plywood. So if this is secured here, but not here, these pieces will be completely detachable. So when we put glue on, we only want the glue to be on this, and we only want the brad nails to be on this side. So you can see here that the glue that I'm putting on is only on the panel on the right side. And then when I put the brad nails in here, the brad nails are only going into that panel on the right side where the glue was. So I pull the clamps off and these are already locked together, but you can easily take them apart. However, they're still sturdy whenever they're together. So the building is now done. So we have four pieces all together, two of these pieces and two of these pieces over here. Now these pieces will fit together. They're plenty sturdy without any reinforcement on the inside, any brackets to hold them. So these pieces here and here will match up with this piece here and they'll lock together perfectly. If you want them to be a little stronger, maybe if you have kids or pets running around, I'll show you how to put an inside support too. But just so you see how easy this is, let me show you how these lock together. Check. So each panel has a gap where the other panel will fit in. So you line them up and then the other panel can be just snapped in and locked into place. Since the opposing panels are identical on each side, they can be flipped upside down or swapped side for side and they'll all still fit together forming the box. So you get everything in place, you may have to tap one in gently, and it really is as simple as it looks. It's also very sturdy, so here you can see that I'm shaking and tossing the box around, and I actually couldn't get it to fall apart by that. Now you still can obviously take the box apart, you just tap the inside with a hammer and pop one panel out of the other, and it disassembles as easily as it did assemble. Anyway, so once I had taken all of the panels back apart and disassembled everything, I decided to stain it over with Minwax Provincial Stain. This is a very rich and bold color, however, not as dark as some of the darker walnut or espresso stains. So I stained over each panel and then let them dry for a day or so. You could obviously paint or finish the panel however you wanted. One trick that I used was to use a paintbrush in the gaps in each of the lines to make sure that everything was well stained. 
So if you wanted to reinforce these, there's a couple different things you could do. One of the easiest ways you could do would be to take a two by two board, put it in the corner, put a screw in this side going into this board, and then a screw on this side going into this board. That would hold that even more securely than it already is. You could also use any type of corner bracket that you could find. So this is a bracket for tabletop expansion. I'm not really sure what this thing is. I just have this laying around. And this is a bracket for a door hinge. So you could put this in the corner, put screws into each side. Similarly, you could put these in the corner and put screws in both sides as well. You can find anything like this or even more specific to this at any hardware store. I'd be surprised if they're more than a couple of dollars. So while I don't think that you need any inside supporting brackets or the 2x2 two two to keep this sturdy, if you want to put them on for a little more support, you can definitely do that. So all that was left to do was to assemble this under the Christmas tree. Here's a couple shots of the final product after it was all assembled and finished up underneath the tree. So that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave me a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Merry Christmas and stay tuned for more.